Welcome one, welcome all to our Sunday night Doom Mapper Showcase. In today's episode, we are going to be tackling one of the most iconic quads ever created in Doom. That's a huge statement, isn't it? Alright, so here's the backstory. This is the WAD Doom City. Many of you probably recognize the name, or will recognize it the second I turn the corner and you see what it looks like. This is the second Doom WAD I ever played back when the games came out. The very first Doom WAD I ever played was Unholy Trinity, based on Trinity College. That one will always hold a special place in my heart. And don't worry, it will be coming up now that they finally added it to the Kexport. Um, I recorded it months ago, not long after I started doing Doom content. Uh, back when I had the work computer and couldn't do audio. So now I can give it the full uh, detailed breakdown it deserves. But... This time around, we are looking at the second Doom Wad I ever played. Doom City is from 1995 by the artist, the late artist Seamus Young. His body of work included three different Wads in 1995. That was Slugfest, this one, Doom City, and Torment. He also did one in 1996, Phobos Relive the Nightmare which was a level replacement wad. Four major pieces of Doom history to, Sh to Seamus' name. And this is easily, in my opinion, the most iconic. This, I think a lot of people attribute to one of the earliest uses of Doom Cute. And we will quickly see why together. Let's go ahead and set our save. As we can see, 87 monsters, 9 items, and 6 secrets. Now, Doom City is literally just that. It is modeled after a real city, which is what always drove my passion for exploration in the early days of Doom. I mean, I'm not kidding. This was back in 1995 when I played this. This is literally peak nostalgia for me. And uh, major thanks to Doom Kid, who actually is the one that uploaded this. Oh, this is such a memorable skybox. The night atmosphere. Let's work our way around. So right off the bat, we have ourselves a telephone booth. You can tell a product of the time back then. And here come the hit scares. If you are looking for combat, this is not going to be the wad for you. Because that's not what this is about. This is made to emulate a city. And... In all honesty, um, in my opinion, the first real rendition of Doom Cute we ever got in the Doom franchise. So let's go ahead, uh, juke the meatball over here. Try to stop him from getting too crazy with all of his spawns. And to think, this this literally came out right after Doom 2 came out. Before Foul Doom, even. <laughs> Let's go ahead and save. And work our way back around. As you can see, there are some intense fights, but that's really not the focus of the squad. <sighs> Take out the Rachnatron. Try to take out these annoying lost souls. Uh, 
best we can with the pistol. It doesn't even seem to be hitting it. There we go. Now let's get our shotgun back and do some more cleanup work. Just circling the city here. That's mainly our first order of business is just doing some cleanup. Again, just circle the area. Hell Knight, you're just an ammo waster. There is a berserk on top of that telephone booth. So, pretty good guess we're going to be able to get that thing down. And now, let's go ahead and save. And let's start looking around. So, this is the building we started in. Which is really just a launching point to this whole area. Again, take out the Spectre. Take out the Lost Soul to wander back here. Alright. And now, let's look at this map as if we had just started it. So, if we go around to a corner, we can see the first thing we run into is Integra Bank. Because, you know, banks and integrity definitely go hand in hand. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Air quotes. And we, we've got too much distraction going on here. Come on, guys. We're, we're trying to have a good look at the area. We don't need you all getting in the way. Could you please find somewhere else to go for the evening? Thank you. All right. If everyone's done trying to kill us now, save. So this is Integra Bank. And we can see here we have the actual bank lane. As well as the Mac ATM. Which I think is an amazing touch. This is exactly what I mean. You will see some of the most unique Doom Cutes out of this tiny little wad. Makes it so memorable. Just drive up. Yeah, I'd like uh, I'd like to get me about a 20 out. You know, 1995, a 20 actually went somewhere. Instead of right down the Taco Bell menu board. Now over here, we can see there's another ATM at the front of the store. And we need a blue key to actually get in the bank. We can see that the red key card is in the bank. So, on to the next area. Now we have, yes, 7-Eleven. Not sponsored. But, um, always thought it was so neat seeing a 7-Eleven in Doom. <laughs> so here we have our gas pumps. Luckily, we can grab the items from down below. All of them except for this one. That's not wanting to grab. Now, I love how they actually hid how much the gas is from us. Because even back then, no matter what era you're in, gas is always too expensive. Even when you think, hey, you're doing good. No, it's too expensive. That's it. pretty much everyone's belief at all times about gas. So let's check out this 7-Eleven. Right off the bat, could be your area map one of our nine items health and here come the demons so we have some demonic forces infesting our 7-eleven we also hear some doors opening so let's check the back so far so good and now let's look at all the goodies that they keep a double barrel shotgun behind the counter Apparently, they've had some problems with some customers, as well as the 100% armor. All the assortment of drinks on the shelves. And I love how detailed some of these are, too. Like, you can easily make out the Mountain Dew bottles, <laughs> the Mountain Dew voltage on the bottom down there. The different snacks up top. I mean, it's just so neat that they did this way back in 95. I mean, Final Doom, TNT, Plutonia had not even come out yet, and they had all this. 
I mean, the way he layered that to make it look 3D, amazing. I mean, it literally feels like I'm in a store shopping. I mean, I should not have a shotgun in my hand, you know, shopping in the store. <laughs> that, this makes more sense. And just like that, our 7-Eleven is good. Let's continue on. Now from there, now that we're out in the wilderness, we might, might need a weapon. This doesn't seem like the safest town we've ever been to. Now we have this brown building. Let's save. And what do we have here? Well, I'm seeing books right off the bat. I believe we may have ourselves a library. Let's go ahead and get health. Watch out for the hit scares. Try pin us in. And now let's take advantage of all of the health and ammo. Again, just work it around. Take out all the enemies. And just like that, this area is secure. So let's check it out. And this is our local library. So you come in, and ironically enough, that uh, shotgun soldier manning the front was actually the uh, librarian <laughs> that we just sh shot in the face with a shotgun. <laughs> Unfortunately, all the patrons kind of turned to uh, undead, uh, demonic versions of themselves. But your classic Doom bookcases arranged in such a way that it's easy to get the feel that this is just a small community library. I mean, we have one here in Gibsonville, not far from me, uh, that looks pretty similar to this, actually. It has some computers back in this corner, and it actually has, like, the little conference or study rooms over here. But uh, layout-wise, it's pretty much the same. Straight into reception and group of books on both sides. So cute. Back through. And now, let's see what's going on with this phone booth. Because Berserk is one of our items. Let's pull it down. There we go. Now we're ready to punch out the world. Let's save. At this point, we're at 60 kills. Two items, one secret. Stop and shop. Well, right now we have hit scares attacking us. Let's take care of that. The exit is behind the yellow key door. So let's go see what the stop and shop has. And how it differs from the 7-Eleven. So basically, so far, if we do a quick recap, we've got ourselves just a default starting area, just launching point. And you have yourself a bank. Equipped with ATMs, the turnstiles, as well as an interior we've not been able to get into yet. You have a fully functioning gas station, 7-Eleven specifically, with all their drinks. We also have the local library. Bookcases, mazes of books, and the librarian that unfortunately didn't make it. And now, we have ourselves a grocery store. So let's check out the Stop and Shop. Come on. Come on, somebody. Throw this thing in a modern wad. We need more vending machines in Doom. I mean, for the love of God, Doom 2016 gave you vending machines. <laughs> we need more of these. So let's see if we can make out anything. Since this is Pepsi products, that's going to be potentially cherry Pepsi on top. Mountain Dew. I'm guessing that's going to be Fanta Grape underneath. No, that's going to be Aquafina most likely. Third one down. And then uh, probably your Fanta on the bottom. I believe Fanta's Pepsi. I might be wrong there. Alright, let's go clear out the grocery store. 
in here we get the chainsaw. But let's be honest, we have we have the boomstick. We don't need a chainsaw. Watch out for enemies wandering the aisles. And let's go see what this has to offer us. Now this one actually has some products. Literally packed sky high. I mean, just like at Walmart or something, you're going to need a step ladder to get to the top shelves. So height-wise, absolutely makes sense. Again, all the products thrown in 3D in the core. A back room here. So back here we have the stock room. You know, anytime they say, well, do you have this product? And they say no, you ask, well, can you check in the back? Well, here's the back. And notice, this place got some skeletons to it. Also, the blue key card. Go ahead and get the chain guns. And what do we have here if we hit the switch? This is the loading bay, which you may or may not have noticed from the other side. So let's go ahead back over here. Make sure we've got all the items and all the enemies drug out of here. We can pull this down for the May kit. And let's get back out here. So, as we saw, hit the switch to open the bay door for the shipping dock for the truck to roll up to and unload the groceries for the store. And I also love how they did a bit of a 3D front to the store. Kind of reminds me of Aldi a little bit. How they're set up. But they already said this is a stop and shop. Yep, stop and shop. And actually, you know what? I just realized that that's an automatic door. So watch this, I'm gonna go sideways, you don't have to press it. <laughs> so literally, just like the grocery store, you have automatic doors. Get the health, and let's go ahead and head out of the grocery store. And it looks like next up we have a church, because let's be honest, Doom would not be Doom without a church. But we can't get in. You need the red key for that. And we saw the red keys in the bank. So let's continue on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we got a Mancubus hiding in the dark. Now what is this? A little ticket booth that he's hiding in? Drive through. Oh, it's a drive through. Burger Hut. Uh, yes, Macubus. I'd like uh, a double quarter power with cheese, a triple, a Dave single, and a spicy chicken filet. All right, supersize it. Yes, and the apple dumpling. Let's go. Thank you. And I love the add touch that you have health here right after you order. So it's like you order your food and it just makes you feel better. <laughs> as long as the Mancubus ain't there to ruin your day. So just like that, we have ourselves our own little fast food joint. I also love how the curb uh, extenuates it too. So this is literally your parking lot over here for it following the road around and we are back to the starring area so let's go ahead now we have the blue key and head on into the bank the ATM opened when we came in there so that was a secret number two that one was blunt, blatantly obvious just by how loud it was so in the bank, we get the red key card. The rocket launcher seems out of reach, though. Ah, we can pull us down. And then hop across to get the rocket launcher. Will we need it? 
probably not, but we have it. Ooh, the auto map is showing something else funny going on. Now, where is this at? This is uh, over here oh. to the left of us outside. So let's head out here. And it looks like there's something behind the bank sign. Somehow. Somehow. So the question is, how do we get that sign down? That doesn't lower it. That doesn't lower it. So maybe it's something that comes down later with something else we do. For now, let's go ahead and put this key to good use. Because the red key is what we need for the church. Let's save. Whoa. I actually was not expecting cacodemons in here. That seemed like an odd choice. I would have expected an arch vial in here and some revenants. Whoa, this is a huge church too. And this is absolutely right. You go straight in, there's usually like a billboard or something here. You've got areas to sit for the overflow people. Or the people with the loud kids. They can sit in the back. If they had to take the kids out. And then you've got what? You've got one, two, three, four different pews worth. Also, uh, light amplification visors. I can never remember the name of them. As well as a backpack. And we've got booths on both sides. So let's go ahead and check left first. Meg armor. And right side gives us... Teleporters. So let's hold off on that and save. Right up front at the pulpit, we get the yellow key card. And now, if we teleport, it takes us to Burger Hut. Wait a second, that actually makes too much sense. Alright, all my churchgoers, my, all my fellow churchgoers out there, you all know exactly what that's about. You get your message, and then immediately, what's the first thing you do when you leave church on the way home? You always grab something to eat. <laughs> this person knows how it's done. I mean, every time, without fail, you go to church, you get something to eat on the way home. <laughs> Outstanding. All right. Now, at this point, we're at 86 skills, three items, and four secrets. Now, with the yellow key, we can open the area to the exit. Now, obviously, we don't want to until we actually find all the goodies. But let's go ahead and see what this is. This is the bar. Oh. Because every town has to have a bar, you know. So here's some of our items around the counter. Looks like you can pull down the counter for a secret. And that gave us all kills. Almost all items. Now if we open, there's going to be the exit. So we don't want to do that yet. We've got one secret left to find. It's likely holding the final item. And most likely, it's that sign at the bank. Now how we get behind it, I'm not sure. Unless it just magically opened. Now maybe we have to press ATM back here. No. Shoot it. Because we're mad at it? No. Anything to this one? No. Okay. That opened this. Now, anything, anything we press in here affect the sign? No. That is the only thing I see immediately that is grayed out as far as secrets go. 
So the question then is, what else can we fiddle with? Now I see we have, um, let's see, we have supports back here. wonder if it's actually triggered somewhere else just to throw you off like further away because I am still perplexed by the vending machine that it should do something but it doesn't look like it does wait what the heck yeah it did it was so far away you couldn't hear it. But that also makes too much sense because think about it. If you're getting something out of the vending machine, it's to make you feel refreshed, which is literally what we did. We refreshed our health all the way up to 200%. <laughs> and with that, you have all kills, items, and secrets. So this is not a map that is supposed to be for combat. This is a map that is specifically for exploration and just being in the environment. You know, early Doom, this is what it was about. You had the Doom games for playing, Ultimate Doom and Doom 2 at the time. And when people were making wads, they were doing stuff like this. Uh, Unholy Trinity, the very first wad I ever played, it literally is designed to imitate Trinity College. Uh, the section of the college that the person went to. This is to mimic all these different real places. And uh, Earth, another really famous wad, which I'm going to actually do a full uh, series on, just like we've done No Rest for the Living. Uh, I'll do Earth as well. Um, it's nine maps, and it is literally made to mimic a uh, island archaeological dig uh, right by the beach. I mean, it's got rolling waves and everything. So in the early days of Doom, this is honestly what people were doing. They wanted to make environments feel as real as possible. And that's honestly what I really wish we got back to today. I think there's just so much emphasis on combat with Doom that a lot of people have lost a lot of the creativity. Now, that's not to say there still isn't plenty of it out there. There are plenty of people doing really creative things. I mean, we saw Rostaman Games, Home Sweet Home. He did a version of this that uh, served the exact same purpose. Uh, yes, there was combat, plenty of it. I mean, it was extremely difficult. But at the same time, all the Doom Cute really made you feel immersed and vested in his world they created. And this, I mean, every little subsection just feels like they can be real places. I mean, the 7-Eleven, you had the counter, you had the gun stashed behind the counter, but, you know, in case you had people trying to burglarize the place. I mean, the fact that uh, the church, once you're done with it, literally warps you to the fast food, <laughs> fast food place. I mean, it's just genius little quirks like that and even the fact that the level ends in the bar just makes too much sense you know how do a lot of people on the weekends end their night well if they go out they usually end it in some kind of bar or club so it's like after you're done doing all your shopping and all your errands for a day and keep in mind look at the skybox it is night time so if you've done all your stuff for the day, it's nighttime. You can head on out. And also keep in mind the uh, the uh, buildings that were actually locked. You notice you could get into a grocery store uh, automatically. It's an iMac door. 
Uh, so the grocery store, a.k.a., was open late. The 7-Eleven you could get right into, because, again, gas station, open late. But when you look at the places that were closed, the bank was locked, because the bank doesn't stay open late. The church was locked, because the church didn't stay open late. And the bar was locked, most likely because we probably came too early. Because most grocery stores, at least uh, here in America, uh, if most of them usually close about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. There may be some bars that haven't gotten into the swing of things yet, so we might have been a little bit early for it. But we got the key, we broke in, there was no one, no us, um, serving us anything. I guess those two uh, that we took out from long range. But you notice they didn't even have any product up here to sell you. I mean, we know this wad has bottles. We found that from the gas station. So, the fact that they had no merchandise just tells me the bar wasn't open yet. We broke in, and now we broke out. This map is done. <laughs> this is just the kind of imagination I like to uh, emphasize and I like to showcase when it comes to Doom. Because to me, this is what really immerses players in the experience. This is what makes finding secrets fun and engaging is when you can really uh, put yourself there, use your imagination. That, to me, is what makes the perfect Doom levels and wads. Just be... In other words, if you have a Doom level called um, My Farm, and your farm looks like a toxic sewer, or your farm looks like a church, then it doesn't make sense at all. But if the farm is actually made to look like a farm, these are the kind of things I look for in maps, is how well people relate it to whatever they're trying to create. And this was a perfect example. Um, Seamus Young, he passed, I think it was two years ago, sadly. But... We definitely want to keep his wad and his memory alive and well, because apparently, from what I am seeing on the Doom Wiki, he was actually awarded, posthumously, a CAC award in 2022 as a memorable sidebar for this wad's place in Doom history. Like I said, second wad I ever played, one of the originators of Doom Cute. It is honestly a historic relic that I think a lot of people can learn things from and take mapping points from. But with that said, I will have all the information and the download in the description below. Absolutely check it out. Uh, immerse yourself and just have fun with it. Um, and as for us, we will see you all next week with the next big special. Till then, take care everyone.